Hello everyone, we are from Boston University. I'm Ji Hao, and I and Ozan will present our work on rotation-aware pupil detection in overhead fissure images. This is a joint work with Hayato, Professor Ishor, and Professor Conrad. Our motivation is to help build modern smart rooms, which typically consist of surveillance, HVAC control, space management, and building safety. All of these features depend on detecting and localizing people, so an indoor people detection algorithm is required. We choose top view fisheye cameras to detect people because of two reasons. First of all, fisheye cameras have a large field of view, which means we need fewer cameras to cover a room, um, so it requires simpler processing to build hardware. Also, there is less occlusion from top view. A top field camera can capture more information about people, so the detections will be more reliable. However, there are two main challenges for fisheye cameras. The fisheye geometric distortion and various human body orientations, as can be seen in this figure. Here is our problem definition. We have an image taken from an overhead fisheye camera, and we want to design an algorithm that can produce bounding boxes that align the human bodies as tightly as possible. There are several existing algorithms on this problem. First, we could directly apply object detection algorithms designed for perspective images, for example, YOLO version 3. There are large datasets available for these algorithms, but these algorithms produce axis-aligned bounding boxes, and typically they will miss non-upright people. To address this issue, several algorithms have been designed for fisheye images. For example, Tamura et al. used rotation invariant training to produce radius-aligned bounding boxes, which is successful for standing people. However, they have a strong assumption that people are always radius-aligned, which is not true. Alternatively, Lee et al. extracts sliding windows from um, fisheye images and apply Yolo v3 to each window. They get a good performance in the cost of very high computational complexity. In contrast, our approach can produce arbitrarily oriented bounding boxes. We outperform the state-of-the-art methods while having the same time complexity as Yolo v3, which is one of the fastest object detection algorithms. In addition, we also introduce a new dataset named Septov to evaluate our algorithm. Here is an overview of our proposed approach. We use a fully convolutional neural network to directly predict the bounding boxes of people. Given an input image, we first use a convolutional net to extract features at different resolution levels. In this case, we adopt Yolo v3, but any other convolutional nets can be used. After obtaining the features, we use another convolutional net to predict the bounding box parameters. Each bounding box is represented by six parameters, the center location, size, angle, and the confidence score. In this work, our main focus is the angle regression. We propose a loss function that is carefully designed to predict rotated bounding boxes. Angle regression is very different from traditional regression since angle is periodic. For example, in this figure, Let's say the left one is a prediction and the right one is a ground truth. The predicted angle is 45 degrees while the ground truth is minus 135 degrees. Um, they have a large difference, but actually they are the same bounding boards. So we cannot simply use the traditional losses such as L1 or L2 loss because they will penalize good predictions. To solve this problem, we propose a periodic angle loss as in the following expression where f could be any symmetric loss function, for example, L2 loss. Basically, this formula takes any loss function and makes it pi periodic. In this figure, we plot an example of periodic L2 loss and its derivative. We can see this loss function is continuous and piecewise convex. Although it's not differentiable at some points, we can avoid them by manually setting the derivatives at these points. Another problem about rotated bounding boxes is the aspect ratio ambiguity. As shown in the figure, a rotated bounding box has two equivalent parameterizations, um, xy wh 45 degrees and xy hw minus 45 degrees. To solve this problem, 
we adopt the following convention in annotations. We define the shorter side of the bounding box to be width and the longer side to be height, and define the angle between minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Under this rule, each bounding box corresponds to a unique parameterization. For example, in this case, we choose the left one to be the bounding box parameters. By using the periodic laws and this parameterization rule, the network can learn to predict arbitrarily oriented bounding boxes. For evaluating our algorithm, we introduced a new dataset for person detection from overhead Fisher images and named as SEPTOF. As you can see in the example images, SEPTOF covers some challenging scenarios, such as a crowded scene and low illumination. We annotated each person in SEPTOF with a rotated bounding box. All of the bounding boxes are annotated spatiotemporally, which means the bounding box of the same person carries the same ID across different frames. So SEPTOF can be used for person tracking and re-identification as well. We made this dataset publicly available on our website. In addition to SEPTOF, we use two publicly available datasets, which are MirrorWorks and Hubble. However, MirrorWorks does not have rotated bounding box annotations. So we relabeled a subset of MirrorWorks with rotated bounding boxes and named as MWR, which stands for MirrorWorks Rotated. The table shows some statistics about these three datasets. As you can see in the table, average number of people in SEPTOF is significantly higher than the other two datasets, which makes SEPTOF more challenging than the other two. This table shows a comparison of graphic with state-of-the-art algorithms on the three datasets that we mentioned. The evolution method that we used here is AP50, which is a common use object detection method. As can be seen in the table, our algorithm running at 608 by 608 resolution achieves the best results compared to previous methods on all three datasets, while running tens of times faster than its best competitor. Moreover, if we increase the input resolution to 1K by 1K, the performance can be further improved with a cost of reduced speed. Here you can see some visual results of Rapid. The leftmost video shows the standard and now crowded walking scenario. The middle one is a more challenging scenario due to a variety of poses and movements in the middle region. As you can see, Rapid performs very well in the middle region as well, so it can detect a variety of different orientations. The rightmost video shows an example of a crowded scene, and again, Rapid seems to perform very successfully by detecting most of the people in the video. Even though Rapid achieves very good results in terms of the overall metrics, it still fails in some extreme scenarios. In this slide, the green boxes are used to show true positive, red boxes are used for false positives, and yellow boxes are used for false negatives. The left image shows a low light scenario from SEPTOF, and it can be clearly seen that Rapid misses some people in those regions due to low visibility. And also, in the middle region, again due to low visibility, there is an extra false positive detection. In the right image, you can see some people images on the screen, which are detected by Rapid, but they are not annotated in the ground truth. So, they are counted as false positives. In most of the applications, these on-screen people images should be omitted. For example, in a people counting scenario, they miss the count the number of people inside the room, not in the projection. To summarize, we introduced a new dataset for people detection and tracking from over to share videos with 25,000 frames and 173,000 people annotations. For the detection of rotated bounding boxes, we introduced a new periodic loss function for angle regression and showed that our proposed algorithm outperforms state-of-the-art algorithms with no additional computational complexity. Based on our visual evaluation, we concluded that there are some remaining challenges in this field, such as on-screen people images and people detection and low illumination. Further details of our algorithm and an in-depth st ablation study can be found in our paper and website. Thanks for listening.